contrary to what some people might be trying to convince you that you may have heard recently in the past few years, music theory is in fact not racist. And I thought this would be a good one to do with my good friend Tom, mm. because I'm aware that you did uh, at least three years studying music at university. I did, and I'm like grade seven in electric guitar. Yes, I, I uh, own an electric guitar, I am in a band, and I have a very, very basic idea of music theory. But just for anybody who out there watching who may not be aware of what music theory is, because I do think that there may be larger portions of our audience who don't, uh, music theory is kind of mistakenly seen by some, often those who don't really know much about music theory or snobs within certain musical traditions, as rules on how to write good music mm. in terms of harmonic structure, the way that a song should crescendo and all that sort of stuff. Whereas by people like myself, and I don't know about you, but certainly for me, it's seen as more of a guideline of how you can, uh, of, of how certain things that you can do with music will make them sound. So for yes. instance, there are the, uh, there are notes that you can play on a guitar. I'm just going to go all from a guitar-based uh, um, framework here. On a guitar, there are notes on it and uh, different notes. If you play, say, an E and go to a G, which are three frets apart, three, three notes apart from one another, that's called a minor third. Mm -hmm. And if you know that it's a minor third, you know what a minor third sounds like in that interval. Uh, which will create a specific effect. So if you write a song entirely comprised of minor thirds, it will have a very specific effect as opposed to something else like that. Do you want to give your explanation just to, to probably add a bit more well, and is, round it, it off? It's, it's an indexical way of, of understanding um, harmony and j just how kind of two different notes or two or more notes actually sound good in coherence to one another. Mm -hmm. It's um, like we, we universally seem to realise dissonance, for example, as bad, hence why an out-of-tune guitar sounds bad. Mm. And I suppose music Musical but theory. at the same mm. time, you can also apply it in a place that is musical. Yes. Yes. Yes, of course, as, as, as the, uh, the Turks do. Of course. Yes. But would you say that music theory is a, white, is a uh, Trojan horse for white supremacy? I'd like to hear the argument. <laughs> So would I, so would I. <laughs> but absolutely not. No. Uh, it, it, yeah, absolutely not. There are many criticisms of the way that you can say that music theory is taught and respected by some in certain fields. There's a sort of uh, uh, fetishization of it in, by certain people who I would assume don't know much about music theory in that if a, mu if a song has to fit to music theory, then it's a good song. Mm. And if it doesn't, then it's a bad song, which is wrong because realistically with music, if it sounds good to your ear, then it is good. Yes. That's, that's the only real the scale supreme yes the ear is ruler mm -hmm. but uh, people have been trying to make it seem that music theory is racist because obviously of course they have every element of western music theory that is because right. every element of western cultural traditions and cultural heritage has to be racist because it's western and western europeans are white which yeah, is bad. They just can't see outside of the paradigm of race. Yeah, so this is a story that's kind of been developing for the past few years. Here's where it sort of started back in 2020. Music theory professor hounded by anti racist campaign threatens to sue university after they join unconstitutional witch hunts. So, a professor and editor of a music theory journal named for a 19th century German composer has threatened to sue the University of North Texas after student demands for the racist journal to be dissolved launched a school probe. Timothy Jackson, a UNT professor who founded the school's journal for Schenkerian studies, named for a 19th century Jew German Jewish composer and musical theorist, uh, the theorist Henrik Schenker, is threatening to sue the school after the administration opened an investigation based on a student-led campaign to smear the journal as a bastion of white supremacy. UNT announced a formal investigation into the journal, appointing a panel to examine objectively its editorial processes to see whether standards of best practice in scholarly publication were observed and recommended strategies to improve those processes. It also reaffirmed UNT's dedication to combating racism on campus and across all academic disciplines. So you can see up to there, they're going, oh, you know, we don't think that it, maybe they're d uh, adhering to our standards. We need to make sure the standards and we need to do that to make sure that we don't encourage racism in the university, which is implying something pretty strong there. It's implying yeah. the breach of standards is pr uh, promoting racism. 
which is, as we'll come to see, is not true because you may wonder why have they started this inquisition into him in the first place? Yes. It's very strange, but we'll find out. According to Jackson's lawyer, at least one uh, individual was coerced into signing the student and faculty positions, demanding his exile and his journal's dissolution. The journal came under attack after a group of graduate students at UNT's Division of Music Theory, uh, Music History Theory and Ethnomusicology because that's a field now, <laughs> ethnomusicology, what ethnicity is music? This yeah. is just saying jazz equal black music. That, that is implicit in the term, isn't it? It really is. And there is an argument for you can trace the roots of particular musical genres and subgenres back to certain peoples, but I'm of the rather old-fashioned at this point opinion that music doesn't belong to any particular culture. No. And I actually uh, appreciate, I, I love so much different music. Mm. Um, I appreciate blending of yes. different styles. I'm a big heavy metal fan, a really uh, a band I'm a big fan of uh, uh, called Orphaned Land, who are a progressive mm. death metal band from Israel. I'm a huge dubstep fan. I mean, that's-, that's Really? No, seriously. <laughs> really? That, 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 I was that, not that, expecting that. No, no, that. That, that, that is multicultural, as, as multicultural as it gets, but it's brilliant. Yeah, you can't I, question it. I think you can uh, make new art. Well, the point that I was going to make was that Orphaned Land, they incorporate all of the Western style mm. heavy metal uh, tropes with traditional Middle Eastern musicianship and scales, which which makes it sound really exotic, very interesting. It's a kind of palette that you don't typically mm. get over here at the West. And I appreciate, I want that sort of cultural mix mixing of styles from music because honestly, it just makes really interesting music. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to, to segregate different genres out dependent on race. No, and to, to make one just inaccessible. Yeah. Um, for others to engage in but on those grounds. These are the sorts of people who say like Eric Clapton stole uh, clout from black people for playing oh, blues music. I hate that argument. Yeah. Uh, they published a letter denouncing the platforming of racist sentiments oh. in its 12th edition, demanding UNT administration dissolve the journal entirely and hold accountable every person really? uh, responsible for the direction of the publication, including through discipline and potential removal of faculty who use the JSS platform mm. to promote racism. The students exoriated the toxic culture at UNT. The UNT faculty then piled on, publishing their own letter, praising the graduate students' efforts and slamming the journal as replete with racial stereotyping and tropes, including personal attacks. Despite acknowledging that not all the journal's contents were offensive, they insisted the epistemic center of the journal issue lies in a racist discourse that has no place in publication. So this is the woke mob descending on him, and then his colleagues decide to join in as well and just keep beating him with the woke stick. And they still they still haven't explained the grounds of how these things have... Have, have come about them. in the first place. Yeah. And trust me, when you hear the explanation, you will be no wiser as to why it is that they've tried to do this. This is just another case of woke cancel culture, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, and honestly, if my colleagues decided to all pile on me in a way like that, I would just quit. Mm. I, I would just quit, but he's decided not uh, to go that route, and we'll find out in a moment. Uh, but here's why it all happened. The discourse began with a November presentation by Black Hunter College professor Philip Yule, uh, who declared that music theory suffers from a structural oh, and institu <laughs> institutionalized white racial frame. Obviously. Yule singled, singled Schenker out for a particular tongue lashing, denouncing the Jewish musical theorist as an ardent racist and German nationalist whose ideas were formulated to benefit members of the dominant white race of music theory. Schenker, you will charge, believed non-white people were an inferior race. Has he? Music theory instructors, the professor said, must main mention his problematic opinions because those racist views infected his musical theory, uh, theoretical arguments. So the, what they want is for you to go into your class for music theory and they go, by the way, the guy who came up with these ideas is a racist. Has Philip Yule ever listened to black music? Because he'll find that it adheres to the same harmony, actually. Like, like if you think, it, rap, look, look, rap, well, it, for example. Well, in the West. In the West. In the West. But he would probably make the argument that, that means that black music in the West has been subverted by the white, white right, so, supremacist right, so ice structure. Cube, ice, ice Cube, even in his more, shall we, shall we say, rebellious phase, Cop was a killer. right, what was, was, or had what white privilege? I mean, he made by he his was, own standards, he was successful perpetuating white supremacy, <sighs> don't you know? He must have been. Uh, this is, of course, a, a, a massive case of moral relativism, is going into the past and trying to desecrate and discredit 
our traditions, foundations of our cultural mm. heritage of our society, trying to go back and say that our musical uh, traditions are tainted and uh, there is no alternative for that. So I don't understand what he's trying to say. Are we just supposed to drop it all? He probably wouldn't say that. He'd probably be like, oh, I'm just trying to point out the contradictions mm. and other such things. But honestly, we know what you're trying to do. You're trying to subvert us. Yes. Uh, but music theory, no matter who wrote it, should be an objective and descriptive field, yes. not prescriptive. It is guidelines that will tell you what effect a particular thing, uh, musical um, characteristic yes. will have, rather than telling you have to do this yeah. or else the music if, sucks. If you want to contest the standards of theory, then by all means do that, but surely mm -hmm. appeal to a, a bit less of well, yes. an obnoxious moralistic framework. I'll let you continue. Yes, but the Schenkerian scholars opted to focus the journal's next issue after this statement on responding to Yule, presenting a variety of thoughts and perspectives on race and music theory. In his own essay, Jackson accused Yule of scapegoating Schenker for the paucity of African Americans in the field of music theory and suggesting the Hunter Professor's words were part of a broader current of black anti-Semitism. So this is where it starts to get into right. a little bit of name calling on both sides. Although um, there is the point that is made, because I've read a bit of the actual response that he put out. Uh, there is the point that was made that um, one, Schenker was not a white supremacist, he was a German supremacist, mm. which is different, and you're trying yes. to apply modern standards of uh, the way that we have discourse about race mm. to how it was back then. He, ha he hated French people, which I respect, but he also hated British people. So he's a Sivnat, basically. Yes, mm. absolutely. He was also a Jew, and uh, as you can imagine, being Jewish in 1920s and 1930s Germany, not what a nice time to be. Wasn't a nice time to no. be. I don't necessarily think that it's anything to do with anti-Semitism, that they're throwing all of mm. these racist accusations at him, uh, however, so I don't agree with necessarily just labelling it anti-Semitism. That's just throwing names back and forth. But, in fact, Jackson said the journal did invite Yule to respond. Yule denied this, but he also admitted he hadn't read the issue and wasn't interested in doing so. Surprise, surprise. Instead, he encouraged his Twitter followers to sign yet another open letter condemning the vitriolic responses published in the journal and claiming that the anti-black racism evident in many of its essays was proof that the structural force of white supremacy still dominated music theory. Isn't that convenient? If you yes. disagree with me, you're a racist. Yes. It's, just, it's, just it's the, the go-to tactic. It's just the false consciousness argument. Uh, it really is. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, and if you're black and you disagree with me, I guess you've just internalised white yes. supremacy. Good God. It's epistemic laziness at its worst. Mm -hmm. To actually read the content he was encouraging his followers to attack would be participating in my own dehuman uh, dehumanisation. Oh, really? So he doesn't read the journal, concludes it's racist anyway. Yeah. Great, wonderful. Yes. This is the level of yes, academic so, so, but, but, thinking which yes, is going the, on. The potential bolstering of his own argument that he believes so ardently is, is an act of his own dehumanisation. Yep. Well and uh, now the original professor, Timothy Jackson, is suing the school. Uh, if we move along, this is much more recent. This came out just a, a week or so ago. Uh, so a professor at the University of North Texas, Timothy uh, Jackson, suing the school for punishing him after he pushed back against the idea that music theory is a function of white supremacy. The lawsuit first reported by campus reform claims that the First and 14th Amendment rights of Professor Timothy Jackson were violated by the school when they removed him from the academic journal. He co-founded after he published several articles that students and faculty deemed racist. The university took action against Jackson after he held the symposium that promoted differing opinions on a speech by Hunter College uh, professor Philip Yule entitled Music Theory's White Racial Frame. Mm. Uh, so the university basically just said to him, that's sacred knowledge, you can't question that. You, it's, you've been labelled racist. You can't have an, a, a platform to disagree <laughs> or counteract those accusations. You just have to suck it up and take it, you you obvious racist. That's awful. What is the point of a university if you can't disagree with ideas? In this isn't, isn't oh, the point of university anymore, is it? No, it really isn't. It's to reaffirm your ideas that you already had before yes. you started. In the speech in the paper you all published after the speech, you all complained that music theory is white and argued that as a black man, he feels uncomfortable that the vast majority of music theory professors are white. Why? It's got nothing to. Is, is, is there a bias in the hiring you know, you, practices? You know, even, if, even if there was a problem with, with music theory, then surely the colour of the people who are teaching it isn't directly the problem. Now, well, if I call the abstract, if I ascribe race to an abstract concept and then see the race of the people teaching it matches the race yes. that I forced but on if, it. The funny thing, if you're a critical race theorist, 
then you understand race as a social construct. So surely all these professors have to do is identify something else and then the problem's resolved. I mean, the question is as well, with Schenker being Jewish, there is the question as well, if race is a social construct, are Jewish people white? Yeah, well, that, that, that's... That's, that's, a, that's a really difficult question, question that I don't that really no, want to no get into. No one wants to dive into it. No, I won't, because it's just too inconvenient. <laughs> it, it, it really is, and it will bog us down, but there is that question as yes. well. Uh, Jackson also dismissed the idea that music theory field is racist and suggested African-American women and men typically don't grow up in homes where classical music is profoundly valued and therefore lack the necessary background. And that sounds harsh, okay? That sounds harsh. But where's the lie? Where is the lie? These people, including Yule, are calling classical music and classical harmony in music theory whiteness. So surely their own premise lines up with this judgment. I'm not yeah. exactly seeing many composers coming out of the ghettos. That's all I'm saying. No. And uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing if they're still writing good music. But it's, all, it's, the, it's the quality of the music that matters. Yeah, exactly. But we're talking about classical music, classical harmony, mm -hmm. so, but, and you're just calling it racist because because that's how I have to view the world through uh, the lens I have to view the world through. Jackson's lawsuit states that on July 31st, 2020, the school released a statement that it had launched a formal investigation into his journal. Jackson was then told by the UNT uh, provost, Jennifer Cowley, to submit a plan on how to address a report from an ad hoc panel outlining problems with his actions. But a week before the deadline was given, um, it, he was given, he learned that he had been removed from the journal and that the university funding for the journal in the center of Schenkerian studies was being halted. So this is just pure mob justice. He was involved in a struggle session with his colleagues and faculty, basically, all because of a woke mob creating pressure from the outside. This is not how a university should function. No, it's not. This is not how objective knowledge is formed. No, and this is, this is not how you make, I suppose, music and music theory more accessible for those who are passionate about I'm it. Music, music scholarships and music theory is already bloody snobbish enough as it is. Yeah. Let's be honest. Don't forget uh, splitting it across segregation, uh, race, uh, segregating it across racial lines. Musicians already segregate themselves across genre lines. Yes. Jazz snobs and classical kids will not get on. No, they won't. And they will equally take turns to say that the music that the other one plays is not real music and that you're a pleb for even thinking yeah. it is. Yeah, and it's like the producer-singer-songwriter distinction as well. It is, it is. Yeah. And uh, Jackson's lawsuit asks for several demands for judgment, including a declaration from the school that his First and Fourteenth Amendment rights were violated, a request to prevent the Board of Regents from taking action against them, and a request for damages. Timothy Jackson's goals have been consistent from the beginning, and that is to express academic freedom without fear of retaliation from those who disagree. It's not much to ask for, is it? it really it really isn't. <laughs> UNT has failed to protect these rights and has allowed the situation to progress, forcing Jackson to file this suit. In a statement to Fox News, the UNT said that the federal court is not the place for baseless allegations. Baseless allegations? That's what you did. Yes. That's what you did. You engaged in the cancelling and then took him off his own journal. Yes, though, if, if you are the revolutionary um, class or racial group, if you like. You don't have to justify that base, do you? You just immediately inherit Apparently. more of an, an epistemic advantage on how society should be structured. Mm -hmm. The defendants have formally notified the Court of Appeals that we are appealing to the District Court's decision to deny our motion to dismiss. Dr. Jackson's faculty colleagues have not harmed him in any way, mm. you know, apart from taking away his funding and his journal. Yeah. And federal court is not the place to try the plaintiff's baseless allegations against them. Further, neither the Board of Regents nor the University have taken any adverse action against Dr. Jackson. So you can't question us. We are above you, yeah. peasant, is basically the vibe I'm it's getting the from that whole statement. I mean, the, the level, I mean, university, I wouldn't recommend going to anyway, but at least there are still people trying to find new knowledge and, and, and carve out ideas. Yeah. And these people are not interested in that at no, all. Well, well there, is a, there is a place for this in music and in society, but it's looking increasingly like that academia is mm -hmm. not for that I have, anymore. I have got some more stuff, so I'll try and rush through it. Uh, move on to the next one, John. So this is this is the guy, Phil Yule. His um, blog, I think it's on WordPress, oh, uh, that gosh. you can find. That I just want to take some excerpts from, just so that you can see the level of discourse that's going on in his side of academia. You know, people are trying to talk about 
music theory, how you can apply it, make good songs, if mm. you uh, stick to some rules, blah, blah, blah. And this guy's going, confronting racism and sexism in American th music theory by <laughs> Phil Yule. And it, he states at the bottom of this page, it is my hope that they can instigate constructive dialogue so that we can begin to make real anti-racist slash anti-sexist change in music theory. This guy is not only an anti-racist, he's a cook. Yes. Because he's a male feminist. Yes. <laughs> That's all I can say about him there. Move along, and I've got some excerpts from just this big piece here. So my turn towards race scholarship was born of two chance events. In 2014 to 2016, as an untenured assistant professor, I went through a harrowing and bruising battle for reappointment and then tenure and promotion at Hunter College in New York City. For almost two years, as time wore on, and as I wrote one legal memo after after another, in defense of myself, it became abundantly clear to everyone involved that the efforts of those who sought my dismissal were not based on what I was doing as a professor, uh, but rather on the dark color of my skin. He really? provides no examples to back up these claims. Of course he doesn't. He doesn't quote anything. He doesn't even refer to any maybe documents that he's got left over. No. He just says it. They don't have to. Their lived experience is enough to justify the claim. I, yeah, they, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Dis dismiss everything this man is saying immediately. He's a paranoid narcissist, as far yeah. as I can tell, just from that statement. But then, but then, Donald Trump was elected oh. to the US presidency. <laughs> Got to throw a nice Fantastic. sprinkle of TDS in there. On the heels of America's first black president, these two chance events are summed up by Carol Anderson with two words. White rage. Black advancement triggers white rage. <sighs> Does it, does it really? Isn't this just a quote from Robin D'Angelo? <laughs> you mention her, and this rage knows no political party, nor does it limit itself to certain geographical regions. White persons in music theory are virtually all left of center in terms of politics. Interesting that he admits that. And it's easy for such persons to think that white rage is often limited to those who are right of center. Thanks for the stereotype there. This is a grave mistake, as Robin oh, D'Angelo often states in her book, White Fragility. Don't listen to this man, he's no, no. crazy. He's taking Robin D'Angelo seriously. Yeah. Ultimately, once I realized how whiteness works hand in glove with maleness <laughs> in order to suppress both oh, whiteness, non-whiteness, and non-maleness, I began to read feminist scholarship and authors such as Sarah Ahmed, Bell Hooks, Audrey Lord, and Kate Mann, among others. After all, white supremacy is the child of patriarchy and not its oh, parent. God. So this man has radicalized himself reading nonsense, feminist, the post-structural critical he's race theory he's literature. Just, just, he's just made a philosophy out he's, of the worst pick and mix imaginable. This is music theory. This is music's Colin Kaepernick right here. Yes. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. Uh, in this and five upcoming blog posts, I draw on themes from uh, recent work in hopes of achieving a more equitable music theory. And who else does he quote? Who else does he cite in this damning piece of academic genius? Surprise me. In How to Be an Anti-Racist, oh, race scholar Ibram X. Kendi offers four key terms for my argument. And he goes through Ibram's ridiculous ideas that racist policies are something that produce racial inequities, even completely, as we all know, taking intent out mm. of the idea of racism. Completely ridiculous. I hate that framing. Uh, and American music theory is based on the racist idea that whites are superior to people of color, a statement st uh, sentiment stated explicitly by significant musical theorists like Francois Jean uh, Joseph Fetti and Henrik Schenker in the 19th and early 20th century. Once again, he doesn't actually provide any links no, or quotes to of any course. of this. He just states it. There are links and quotes that you can take from Schenker where he's very where he has a few anti-black comments. There are also pages and pages of work that are about anti-French and anti-British ironically white people, mm -hmm. but he's not going to bring them up, is he? No. For those reasons, over 90% of music theory's full-time employees are white. Over 98% of the musical examples in our textbooks were <laughs> written by whites, and 100% of the music theorists discussed in typical classrooms for core classes are white. That's the reason. There is so no connective tissue in did here. He just, did he just quote Richard Spencer? I mean, he might have done, because honestly, if Richard Spencer yeah. had said that, he'd be bragging. These people, uh, th this is this is where a certain level of horseshoe appears, where it's like these people agree with the hard racial collectivists yeah. on the other side of the aisle. They just say it's a bad thing, whereas Richard Spencer... You're right, actually. 
<laughs> you're, right, you're actually right. R racist is not, as Richard Spencer argues, a pejorative. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's agreeing with Richard Spencer. This is how far the critical race theorists have They're gone. They're kissing cousins. Oh, they, <laughs> that's actually the best, point, uh, best term for it. But this kind of thinking leads to this, if we move along. New York Times, how to make orchestras more diverse, end blind auditions. We need to racially discriminate so that we can make a more equitable orchestra, which Clown. doesn't which doesn't look great when contrasted against how it was only nine years ago. No, in this Guardian article, how blind auditions help orchestras to eliminate gender bias. Mm -hmm. So he wants more black men, but women pff, go away. Even, <laughs> you're not oppressed enough. This anymore. is what it leads to. Uh, uh, there is um, a Substack article from John McWhorter talking about this and responding to it, but I don't really have time to go over this. I just wanted to point out that these ideas get started in the academia, where they're obscure, they're weird, weird uh, academics you've never heard of argue about them until they catch on and get to this level of exposure. This music video by um, uh, leftist cook lord himself, Wet Wipe Adam Neely, Music Theory and White Supremacy, which has almost over one and a half million views. The original title for this, he changed That's very, depressing. very, very quickly, was Music Theory and uh, Is Racism. Which he then changed to music theory and white supremacy when he probably realized, hold up, this is going how, to get me in a lot just of trouble. How dumb it sounded. Yeah, uh, and this he he references to the Timothy Jackson case in this. He interviews Phil Ewell directly. He tries to make the assertion, the implication that some of his old university professors at Berkeley University of California, one of the most liberal universities out there, might have been secret white supremacists. Oh. Uh, he doesn't seem to realize that he's actually self-reporting because his music channel is all about music theory, meaning that he has been a secret agent of white supremacy mm. this whole time. But uh, the comments are appalling. They're so depressing because everyone's just agreeing with him. Everyone agrees with him. And the point, the annoying thing is that he brings up a good point, which is that um, music theory can be improved by expanding ourselves outside of a Western kind of snobbish framework and going, well, what other music theory is there that we can incorporate into the music that we play to make it a bit more interesting? But he has to frame it from the perspective of, we only do it this way because it's racist. That completely undermines his whole point, that ruins it. He because the, the, you know, the worst thing about all of this is you can make good points. You can say stuff that I agree with, that I and many others will agree with. But when you frame it in the way that you do from a racial lens, it undermines that point and makes it ideological and makes it partisan. It ruins everything. It really does. Uh, but the thing is, I can engage with people and content who hate me, because Adam Neely would probably call me a white supremacist. I just don't feel the need to needlessly smear them no. when they do so for parroting these racist ideas. Yes. And in concluding, I agree with your point, but awful straw man arguments and purposeful, purposeful misinterpretations uh, won't get me on side. It's an incredibly narrow re uh, representation of the whole matter, incredibly woke, and I think bringing it all together, it's oh so American. If you enjoyed that section from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to subscribe to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as some of the videos we do, this one being the one I did on the mother of all parliaments, the British Parliament being, of course, the origin of a third of the planet's parliaments. But if you'd like to follow me as well, you can also follow on Getter at at Callum on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.